Josh and Mark, um, Chief McNeil, Chief Wig. Not sure who this one is. Rich is on. It's 5.30, so I'll call to order this meeting for Tuesday, October 13th. Carl, would you start off by giving us a roll call, please? Councilmember Rimley. Present. Ronane. Present. Lundsman. Present. Reif. Present. Johnson. Present. Reinbold. Present. Langer. Present. Rux. Present. Mayor Shoneman. Present. Please stand with me for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First, I'll ask for a motion to approve last week's minutes for the council meeting of October 5th. So moved. Second. Got a motion for Councilman Rux and a second from Councilman Lundsman. Carl, as we have two members on Zoom, would you please give me a roll call vote? Councilmember Remley. Aye. Ronane. Aye. Lundsman. Aye. Reif. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Reinbold. Aye. Langer. Aye. Rux. Aye. Mayor Shawnman. Aye. Motion does carry. No one has spoken. Uh, asked to speak at the open forum, so we'll move along to old business. First, we have Ordinance 201001 supplementing the 2020 budget for various activities and expenses. Carl spent some time explaining that to us in detail last week. Uh, this will be for the possible second reading and final adoption. Carl, is there anything new? Thank you, Mayor. No changes since first reading. Then move to approve. Second. Got a motion for Councilman Johnson and a second for Councilman Reinbold. Does anyone have any questions for Carl before we take the second reading? Otherwise, Carl, give me a roll call vote, please. Councilmember Rux. Aye. Langer. Aye. Reinbold. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Reif. Aye. Lundsman. Aye. Ronane. Aye. Remley. Aye. Mayor Shawnman. Aye. Motion does carry. Next, we've got the consent calendar. We've got two items of routine city business, a license and a request for street use. Can I get a motion to approve those two consent calendar items? Move approval. Second. Got a motion from Councilman Rux and a second from Councilman Ronane. Carl, would you give me a roll call vote on the consent calendar, please? Councilmember Remley? Aye. Ronane? Aye. Lundsman? Aye. Reif? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Reinbold? Aye. Langer? Aye. Rux? Aye. Mayor Shoneman? Aye. Motion does carry. Next, we'll move along to new business. We'll start with Ordinance 2010-02, amending Chapter 2, Administration of the City Code regarding meetings of the Council and City Boards, possible first reading and ordin of Ordinance 20. 1002. We had a bit of a discussion of that in a work session a week or so ago. Joe, what can you tell us about this ordinance? Well, I'll start off, and the, the city attorney will, will add to some of this because we kind of tag teamed the work session, and we'll do the same here. Uh, this had a lot to do with, with meeting protocol, meeting frequency, um, telephone meetings. So after the, the work session, uh, the direction uh, seemed to be that three meetings, as long as it was three regular meetings, that was the minimum. Uh, that the council was comfortable with. Uh, went back and looked at how did that fit versus some work sessions. Um, I believe if we skip that second week, it does look pretty good from a work schedule. A lot of the board meetings are the first week, and this was a perfect example. There's board meetings up until Thursday at noon, and then if we're trying to get them on the agenda in a hurry, um, it really slows down the process and, and makes our, our meetings a little bit uh, you know, the possibility of missing something critical. So that's a good week to skip and give us a little more time. And then we'll also put that staff meeting in between those board meetings and, and gives us some things. One of the biggest concerns was not slowing down planning and zoning. So uh, it's, it's always uh, the third and looking at the schedule, we'll catch the first and the fourth, uh, or the fourth and the first, excuse me, just like we always do. So that wouldn't, wouldn't do anything. Um, so I think uh, I think that covers most of the bases. An interesting thing in talking with the staff, a couple things were 
you know, how will we do this, how will we do that, and all the things. And one of the comments was, well, we have all the tools necessary to do it. We just kind of have to rearrange them a little bit. So I think the staff's uh, in pretty good shape. But something that came up a little bit, I just want to say this, um, that, that was, uh, I think, a good statement to say to you and then also um, for folks listening to the meeting is um, the staff, I, I think, sometimes feels a little pushed. So if you're saying you need a special event permit or some sort of permit, um, you're not trying to turn in a piece of paper to, to beat the clock for to get on the next council meeting deadline. You're you're actually you're bringing in something that's that's starting a, a very um, thorough administrative and review process, of which the final step might be approval at a city council <coughs> meeting. Might might not be. Um, so um, I think this will help us to kind of line those up a little bit uh, and maybe. Um, I don't want to say fix the problems, but uh, enable the staff to communicate a little bit better of, of why maybe something comes in the first week, why it's not the third week, and it actually gives us the time we need. So uh, there, there was a lot of concern about that, is uh, that sometimes people uh, feel that they're turning it in to get on the council meeting agenda. <coughs> and that's, uh, that's actually the last step. So I think that's probably the, the biggest obstacle in communicating that, but uh, we'll, we'll set up some strategies there. Um, so that was that was my part, and all that we're on going to take off with the other two sections. Thank you, Joe. Uh, council members, I placed on each of uh, your uh, uh, seats the um, the red line version of the ordinance, and also uh, a sheet of paper that has the three relevant statutes regarding teleconferences. And I wanted to drill down into the red line changes. You'll see in the first portion where you are changing. Regular meetings, uh, we have language in there, at such place as otherwise provided upon public notice. That's at the bottom of page one of the ordinance. And that's in there to uh, allow for the teleconference uh, change if, we, if that is adopted. And then, of course, later on in that same uh, section, 2-54 deals with the first, third, and fourth Mondays. Uh, you then hop down to section 2-58, rules of procedure will now be rules of order. And what it's saying is that the council will adopt and may amend from time to time rules and order of business. And that could be done by motion. Right now, by ordinance, you'll see that the council is, uh, is uh, required to use Robert's Rules of Order. And I personally am asking the council to go away from that. And uh, no matter what happens, if, if there are any changes to this uh, particular ordinance or if it gets voted down, I'll be coming back to you with a, require, a request that we at least get rid of uh, the Roberts Rules of Order as your, as your rules of order. And then I'll take you to uh, the second part of the ordinance, which deals with uh, teleconference meetings. And it seems like a simple thing to do, especially as we've been doing Zoom meetings and uh, we're in the middle of COVID, but... Conducting a council meeting by teleconference is very difficult. And the language that you're seeing in Section 2-59, uh, I've labored on it more than I uh, care to admit to try to pull up something that would structurally make sense for the council. And I'm still not sure, at the end of the day, the mechanics of doing a teleconference meeting, uh, but a lot of the work is put on our, our uh, host, which will be, at this point, designated as our finance officer, and or his designee, uh, because he will need help in, in hosting a teleconference meeting. But I had provided the council with the uh, statutes uh, that we see now under our open meetings law for allowing teleconference meetings. Um, and by the way, just, just uh, as an aside, if you look at 1-25-1.5, that's the, that's the uh, statute that requires that, uh, that uh, a member answer present at roll call. Um, it's just interesting that they would drill down so far that they would actually require a member to uh, say how they're going to how they're going to show that they're present, and then also that each vote in an official meeting held by teleconference shall be taken by roll call. So we've been doing this for that reason. Um, but then also uh, 1-25-1.6 uh, sets up how the teleconference uh, would be done, and it requires that the public have an opportunity to listen to and uh, where appropriate participate in the call and that's where it gets very difficult. Um, the definitions at 1-25-12 you'll see that there is a definition for teleconference at sub 4 and in our definitions at section 2-59 I've made a slight change to our definition of a teleconference 
uh, to say that it does not include email or similar network messaging platforms. So under no circumstance would the city council or any of the boards be allowed to conduct their meetings by email. Uh, that's just simply not allowed by teleconference. So I wanted to make that clear. But uh, I wanted to make sure that uh, you folks were aware of the changes that were made and I'm prepared to answer any questions you might have about the red line changes or the uh, new teleconference section. So effective, effectively, it doesn't really change the way that we've been handling things as of spring. Uh, with Teleconferencing way, yeah. in terms of the definition and the way that it will be. That's a very good question. Um, you can appear by teleconference or you can have a teleconference meeting. None of these have been teleconference meetings. <coughs> we've had people <coughs> appearing, and we have two uh, council members, uh, Remley and Rife, appearing by teleconference. But this is no, in no way a teleconference meeting. And what that means is that essentially there's an agreement that nobody would have to be present at a physical location for a, for a, a noticed teleconference meeting. Now, there has to be the ability for the public to somehow participate. That's what I was going to ask. And so what we would anticipate, and this is where it gets really hard to do these, because obviously we've got documents that we're seeing on screens and things like that. You folks are looking at hard documents. Uh, but we have the we would have to have the ability for the public to maybe come to a physical location. It might very well be here, to at least be here during a teleconference meeting. In order to engage, what's that? In order to engage, if they wanted to or hear it live. Okay. So mm -hmm. are we as a council obligated to have a way to provide that? Because currently, we're just depending on Hub City Radio to just do it for us. Right, and that. And yeah, well, that person will, can show up here. Yeah. Right, but I mean, if we went full teleconference where none of us were present because, let's say... They could still show up. Something here. happened. So That would be the plan was for them to show up here. Yeah. And I want to be clear, too, that a teleconference doesn't necessarily mean that they all get to participate in a video. If, they're, if they were listening in by, by telephone, that, might, that would satisfy the open meeting requirement. Okay. And so we've talked about this and... and um, former city manager Lynn Lander was really, really opposed to just going this way because it was so difficult to set it up. We just weren't technologically set up yet to do that. And so what we're looking at is uh, Zoom, as you've noticed, has its limitations as well. Mm -hmm. um, or maybe we're not quite sure of all of the, all, all of its capacity. We haven't quite worked out all the capability of Zoom, but is, is that the is that the kind of a video conference uh, platform we want to use for a teleconference? These are things, once you pass this, we still have a lot of work mm -hmm. to put together an actual teleconference meeting. So I feel like the push has been kind of going the other direction, at least since uh, Mr. Guy's been hired here. Is there a reason that we would consider disbanding altogether and everyone just being on the Internet? Um. If it, if it came down, and quite frankly, what if what if somebody in this room was diagnosed tomorrow as positive? We might all have to quarantine for a little while. So maybe mm -hmm. the next meeting we would be in quarantine. Yeah. Then would we keep be able to call in? So that was that's really been the thought behind this. Uh, mm -hmm. You're right. We we kind of brought the the people back together. We're using some some uh, social distancing here, but we're seeing now that as it <clears throat> as the pandemic increases a little bit in our community and surrounding communities, the question gets to be is. What if we aren't here all able to be here? So that would be the case. I, I like having people in the room. I think that's what we want to have. Um, you know, hopefully not going to everybody out, but this, this allows it rather than just canceling a meeting. And if I could add, you'll note that the, the beginning qualifier to s uh, subsection B of section 2-54 uses the phrase when necessary. So it's, it's assumed that uh, a hosted teleconference or teleconference meeting will not be the norm. It'll just be when circumstances require. Are you aware, has any other community in this state adopted such a... Well, if, if I could add, during the governor's executive orders, there was, there was one executive order that actually encouraged uh, cities and, and everybody to use teleconference. Uh, but then it also said but you still have to follow the law. 
Well, I've given you the law. You've got the three statutes there. And, and in order to do the teleconference, it's it's almost impossible for a city council that's looking at documents and and allowing a, uh, an opportunity for the for the uh, public to participate. Uh, it was probably impossible for them to do that without violating their or their own ordinances. Um, so we're getting we're trying to get to where we can do this in a way that that uh, has to abide by the law, which we're which I think uh, this language would allow that to go forward, and you would not be in any way violating any law. So uh, the reason if cities have been doing it, I don't know, but I would bet that very few have been doing it legally. Uh, since even though we don't have a lot of people that come and speak here, but we we give them the opportunity to come here to the last, literally the last minute before the meeting, how would we set something like that up, or how would we make them, if they say can't come here personally, they can only be on whether they're homebound, they're quarantined, whatever. What do we do to give them the opportunity to participate in that manner? In the there's a there's a notice requirement that'll go out as part of our standard um, public notice and, and agenda. That notice will always give that information as to how it is that they could participate. So if it's a Zoom invitation, if it's a call-in number, it'll tell them a place where they can go to. To and then tell us it would likely they want be to say here. something. Yeah. <laughs> Another thing that we've been talking about is a requirement that if somebody does want to make uh, participate in the public comment uh, the, the open forum portion of the meeting, uh, that they would need to notify the finance officer ahead of time, give their contact information, let the finance officer uh, make that call um, to set that up so that they would be able to call in and participate. And I, I just want to make it clear to you, again, as I've talked about before, this is your opportunity to do the business of the city. It's not necessarily an opportunity for anybody to show up and talk whenever they want. So in, a, in order for somebody to come and comment, they have to be permitted to do that. So we would arrange for them when that, when that section of the meeting comes up, we could have placed a call, for example, to them, allow them to, to make their comment to the, to the council and whoever else wants to make their comments. And then otherwise, during the course of the meeting, they would only be able to comment if, if invited and, and allowed by the presiding officer. So we could set something up similar to like um, uh, classes on on the internet, where they give a, a section where you can make comments or send a message, and a moderator either decides this can go to maybe the mayor or go to whoever, and they decide if it becomes part of the meeting or doesn't become part of the meeting. Are we? Is that a possibility? It's possible that that, that could be part of it. I mean the the. Uh, there are just so many different ways of, of trying to look at how that comment can be done. Does it need to be public uh, uh, verbal commentary? Can it be written comments that are that are um, read by you know the presiding officer or or the host? I don't know. Uh, we're still working through that process. Uh, but but I you know we know that we're just going to lose some of that flexibility at, in a hosted teleconference. You just will. So the way that you understand it today, we have to have a quorum physically in the room, and then if anyone is extraneously on the Zoom call, that's great. They vote too. That's correct. We today we need to have a quorum always physically present. And that's why we weren't able to do the teleconferences from the beginning. Back to what Joe said, if five of us were happened to be have to be quarantined, we couldn't have a meeting. Couldn't have a meeting. But based on the state's Department of Health, if we remain six feet one another for periods of greater than 15 minutes like that would never be a requirement imposed by the state so correct the way that we're situated in here unless we but what i'm talking about we all have lives out of here mm -hmm. if we get exposed at work we get exposed at home or whatever and five sure. of us happen to be exposed mm -hmm. or get covid then we're stuck at home that's that's kind of what my point is. i understand and that really is the point of this statute, is to be able to do it if we have to. It's never a bad idea just Nobody to have. Nobody really wants to do it. Yeah. yeah. And so a uh, question for you then, Ron, in terms of the rules of order, section 258, this doesn't set in stone the rules of order in which you'd presented earlier. That'll be a vote for another time. Correct. What would happen just sequentially is if this... Uh, uh, 
ordinance or something like it is approved and we go through the, the effective date, which is 20 days uh, after publication, at that point then I would come to the council with a recommendation as to what you should do for rules of order. And right now it would be very close to what I had presented to you folks a while ago as the handbook. Mm -hmm. And then in terms of should this pass next week with the second reading, when would the three meeting that would go into effect, effect immediately at that point? Uh, well, it would be 20 days. Uh, oh, following days. publication, Mary usually publishes these the Thursday after the Monday meeting, so roughly 25 days from from next Monday. Mayor, I have a quick question just for clarification. Uh, Councilman Wright, go ahead. Joe, I'm looking at the um, color coded calendar here. I'm just curious on on the on the rare months where there's five Mondays. Um, do you have this meeting the first, third, and fourth, and then again not the fifth? And correct. Starting over the following month, is that correct? That is correct. Before the next meeting, can we get like maybe a next year's calendar? I know we can all do it, but with uh, when the like boards meet, kind of like what you did with just the last. Three months. If you go scan, it should be able to scroll and it should be the next page. Oh, I think. Yeah. oh nope, there it is. Yeah, yeah, you, see, you, I can't rotate it somewhere. Yeah, you, you have the schedule okay, of the entire 20 and 21. Yep. I did just 20 so that assuming whenever we would we would start uh, so we could see that. But yeah, yeah it gets yeah. it all the way through the, the next year. So right now we're looking at, that would be... Three or four months <clears throat> where we'd only have where we'd be missing one Monday. Correct. Any other questions for either the city manager or city attorney? Or any other points to be made? Well, then we will uh, make it a motion to approve the first uh, reading here, then. So moved. Second. A motion from Councilman Johnson and a second from Councilman uh, Lundsman for this uh, first reading of Ordinance 2010-02. Carl, can you give me a roll call vote, please? Council Member Rux? Aye. Langer? Aye. Reinbold? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Rife? Aye. Lundsman? Aye. Ronane? No. Rimley? Aye. Mayor Shoneman? Aye. Uh, motion does carry. Next, we've got a resolution to establish a consolidated board of equalization pursuant to SDCL 101166, possible approval of the resolution, and to designate someone on this board as a member and also another person as an alternate to begin serving in April to May uh, 2021. So um, I didn't see anyone that was going to be taking point. Is that a Ron thing here? Uh, I asked Carl before the meeting started. Mm -hmm. I think typically we had had the mayor as the as the uh, sacrificial lamb. I as the first <laughs> person. <laughs> <laughs> and sure, then, uh, and I was, was going to actually ask because I've been uh, attending the equalization, the county equalization board meetings. Um, this is to establish a consolidated board of equalization. Uh, is that a separate entity then? It's exactly what it is. It's both. It is a. It's a. Okay. It's a separate entity. Yeah. Sounds good. Well, if uh, if no one else is going to fight me for it, I would continue to serve as the designee. But if if someone else would rather, they wouldn't hurt my feelings. Yeah, I was going to make the motion, but I guess we would. We need an alternate as well. I could serve as an alternate. I, I would move to uh, adopt the resolution with uh, the mayor and uh, Councilman Rux as the alternate. Second that. Got a motion from Councilman Ronane and a second from Councilman Johnson to designate myself as the member and Councilman Rux as the alternate member to serve on the <coughs> board. Uh, any questions or anything else to add to that? Otherwise, Carl, would you give me a roll call vote, please? 
Council Member Remley? Aye. Ronin? Aye. Lundsman? Aye. Rife? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Reinbold? Aye. Langer? Aye. Rucks? Aye. Mayor Shoneman? Aye. Motion does carry. Next, we've got the Brown County Dispatch Center console replacement consideration and possible approval to pay 50% of the cost, not to exceed $35,000, for the replacement of four consoles at the Brown County Dispatch Center. Joe, you're going to tell us something of that. Yes. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, this is one of those interesting things that um, has evolved over the last few months. Uh, as you all know, the, the county operates a dispatch center um, for all uh, emergency calls throughout the city and the county. Um, it's a cooperative uh, board that runs that between city and, and county representatives. There is an E911 fund uh, that supports some of the operations and then the budget is split uh, between the city and the county funds, um, which sometimes is a little problematic, but I think here it's, it's worked pretty well. Um, but if you'll recall, uh, the dispatch center was in uh, apparently a much smaller room in, in the sheriff's department. And a few years ago, it moved uh, to a much larger room. But the, the best example I can give you from when I saw it is they moved from a small square room to a large rectangular room. And so the equipment is for a much smaller space. So they have a room this size and they have four dispatchers literally crammed in that corner over there. So with COVID, uh, there were cons some concerns about uh, the distancing, keeping folks safe, and that is a really important part of our, our public safety response system. So uh, some discussions started. I, I think uh, Ken picked up on some things throughout the state. Uh, could the CARES Fund uh, money be used to improve the dispatch centers? And, and uh, fortunately, the answer to that has been yes. Uh, there's been several other uh, dispatch systems uh, throughout the state that uh, have been working on this and buying these new consoles, so to speak. And it's kind of integrated furniture that ties everything together. And this will <coughs> enable spacing and will utilize that space and keep our dispatch uh, center functioning. Uh, as you'll see from, from the attached, to, to replace the four units, at $70,000. And uh, that's using a quote that was given to several other uh, dispatch centers as well. So an opportunity here. Um, uh, the county has asked, uh, they've committed to uh, purchasing it, uh, asking that we'll, we, we will reimburse half and we'll be able to turn that in as a CARES Act expense. Um, so uh, we believe this is a great opportunity uh, to really do something we'd have to do in the future anyway, um, but it's, uh, it's the right thing to do to keep our dispatch center functioning. And to add a little bit of context to uh, the city participates to the tune of about $400,000 per year. Uh, aside from that, just general budget, and that's what usually would cover these type of expenses. They'd have to budget it out in their annual budget. So it's a little bit of a windfall that the federal government is willing to pay for this. Move to approve. Second. A motion from Councilman Ronane and a second from Councilman Reinbold. Does anyone have any questions? So are the old uh, 911 centers outdated then, or are they still functional and we're just going to get new ones to space them out? Um, there, there is some function. They are perhaps later in life, but one of the things that has been talked a little bit about uh, is utilizing those to, to perhaps, as, as equipment doesn't necessarily age out, but, but ages a little bit, um, of, is this an opportunity to talk about a backup 911 center uh, in a different building perhaps that what if uh, an emergency happens, a natural disaster hits, do we have a backup? So I, I think this will lead to further discussions in that as well. Because we still have a room down in the police station that was built Correct. for that. Correct. <laughs> and, and, and that is one of the, the sites we've talked about as a, as a good place for, for a backup. Carl, roll call vote, please. Council Member Rucks? Aye. Langer? Aye. Reinbold? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Reif? Aye. Lundsman? Aye. Ronane? Aye. Remley? Aye. Mayor Shoneman. Aye. Motion does carry. Next, we've got the request to make application to the BNSF for the permit agreement. Possible approval of $800 application fee to the BNSF for a permit agreement for work within the railroad right of way on State Street. And Robin, you're here. Tell us about that. It's pretty straightforward. We need to have the check to be able to make the application. So we're asking for the $800 check to be approved so we can move forward with those safety meetings <coughs> on State Street. So. Not much else to add. Move to, to approve. approve. So I don't want to 
claim that and take second. a second. Got a motion from Councilman Johnson was uh, in a second from Councilman Lundsman. That's great. Hey, Robin. Yes. Um, did they put a new crossing in on State Street recently? Or last this is going to be last, last year? year? Last fall they did that. They didn't do Dakota Street, though, so that's why we didn't do the medians until after they got those completed. Uh, we do have the right. It's interesting because we do have the right to do the crossing on Dakota Street because it's a section line road. But State Street <laughs> is considered to be railroad right of way versus our right of way. So we that was not on our radar, and that's why we're doing this kind of late late in the game. If you ever have the opportunity, would you please charge them a permit fee if they want to do something on the section line right away? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Would you? Yeah. I'll give that a shot. Okay. Yeah. And, and are we doing this anticipation of next year's project? Because sometimes a railroad does not move quickly. Sometimes is an accurate term, yes. Thank you. Well, Brett just went out and mowed their grass the other day, so I think he's going to send them a, a bill for that. <laughs> Good. Is my understanding. Let me, let me help price it. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do we get a motion on that okay. one? We did. Carl, go ahead. Give me a roll call vote, please. Councilmember Remley? Aye. Ronane? Aye. Lundsman? Aye. Reif? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Reinbold? Aye. Langer? Aye. Rucks? Aye. Mayor Shoneman? Aye. Motion does carry. Next, we've got the request to purchase one high speed rotary blower for the airport from the M Minnesota Department of Transportation Purchasing Agreement. Possible approval to purchase rotary blower from the MNDOT Purchasing Agreement and authorize a payment of $626,551 to MB Broom upon delivery. And Rich, are you joining us via Zoom here? No, Rich. We think he's on. He there. was. He was on there. He took too he long. He was, but I do not see him on the list of participants. If, I'll if move not, to approve. Uh, let's see. What a little second. Ex little explanation is that this came in. Uh, there was there was some. Uh, Concerns with the bids that came in, they, we rejected those, and then our purchasing us off a, a bid list. So a little bit extra process to it, but it's good for us. And the question that I was going to ask this is, is it 90% covered by FAA grant money? I, I believe that's the number. A majority of the $626,000 is being paid by someone else. We have a motion from Councilman Ronan and a second from Councilman Rux. Um, anything else that anyone might and all right, well, Carl, would you give me a roll call vote, please? Councilmember Rux? Aye. Langer? Aye. Reinbold? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Reif? Aye. Lundsman? Aye. Ronane? Aye. Remley? Aye. Mayor Shoneman? Aye. Motion does carry. Next, we've got the payment request for the airport improvement projects, AIP. Uh, payment number one, which is 26. Master layout plan to Helms and Associates for the amount of $2,015.67. Number two is payment number two for the cultural resource survey to Metcalf Archaeological for the amount of $7,954.50. Payment number 24 is uh, to the taxiway C to Helms and Associates for the amount of $35,000. $787.43. Payment number four, which is number 12, to Taxiway Geometry Project to Helms and Associates, $4,474.49. Then we've got payment number five, which is entitled number three, Snow Removal Equipment uh, Research to Helms and Associates of $1,945. And the sixth payment is payment number one, the GA apron improvements. The design of those is $7,947.08. Possible approval and authorization to sign those particular payment requests. And is Rich? I think he's on the phone. Okay. Rich, is that you on the phone? usually tells us about how far along these projects are is about the big <laughs> the, the big good news I can tell you this I actually uh, went out there Friday I had a friend coming in at the, and while I was waiting Rich took me out um, most of these are for the current project they're planning some some future ones already but uh, they are 
90, 95% complete. The, the taxiway that was constructed is completed. Uh, the taxiway that's being uh, re rehabbed a little bit with asphalt and tying all that back together is, is almost complete. Uh, there were a few concerns with some, some of the smaller parts, so they're redoing that, uh, but it, it looks really sharp out there and they'll, they'll be done with that project very soon. Move to approve all six payment requests. Second. Got a motion from Councilman Johnson and a second from Councilman Reinbold. Does anyone have any questions for the city manager? Most appraised of the situation. Uh, Carl, give me a roll call vote on those six payment requests, please. Councilmember Remley? Aye. Ronin? Aye. Lundsman? Aye. Reif? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Reinbold? Aye. Langer? Aye. Rucks? Aye. Mayor Shawnman? Aye. Motion does carry. Next, we've got. A single payment, payment number six to Reedy Construction, possible approval of payment to Reedy Construction in the amount of $957,173.90 pending an acceptable and satisfactory completion of the asphalt joint repair and off, uh, asphalt joint repair and to authorize the city manager to sign that pay estimate. Since Rich is not here, um, Joe, what can you tell us? About? I'm trying, oh, Mayor. Well, welcome to the meeting, Rich. Talking about your nine hundred fifty-seven thousand dollars Reedy construction pay estimate. Tell us about that project. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure what's going on with this phone here, but anyhow, um, so we had a, a kind of an issue that we were uh, working through uh, when our board meeting uh, commenced last week. However, uh, on last Friday, uh, bituminous asphalt. Uh, did make the proper repairs. Um, I went out again yesterday and looked at it. Um, it looks perfect. So um, I would recommend taking the pending off and let's uh, let's pay these guys uh, nine hundred fifty-seven thousand um, one hundred seventy-three dollars and ninety cents. I move to approve it and uh, without it being a pending uh, payment. Second. Remove pending. So I've got a motion from Councilman Ronain to approve payment um, and to make the adjustment to this uh, pay request <clears throat> eliminating the term, uh, the single word pending from the uh, acceptable and satisfactory completion denotation. So and I've got a second from Councilman Johnson. Uh, Carl, would you give me a roll call vote for that, uh, that payment, please? Councilmember Rux? Aye. Langer? Aye. Reinbold? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Reif? Aye. Bunsman? Aye. Ronane? Aye. Remley? Aye. Mayor Shawman? Aye. Motion does carry. Next, we've got the approval of the bill list for October 13th as published in your packets. I get a motion to pay those bills. So moved. Second. A motion from Councilman Rux and a second from Councilman Lundsman. Carl, would you give me a roll call on those bills, please? Councilmember Remley? Aye. Ronain? Aye. Lundsman? Aye. Reif? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Reinbold? Aye. Langer? Aye. Rux? Aye. Mayor Shoneman? I will abstain, but the motion does carry. Next, we've got a Payroll approval for the pay period of September 27th through October 10th, as well as the city share of Social Security, old age, survivor's insurance, retirement health, and life insurance. Can I get a motion to make the payroll, please? Move. Move. Got a motion from Councilman Ronan, a second from Councilman Reinbold. Carl, roll call vote, please. Councilmember Rux? Aye. Langer? Aye. Reinbold? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Reif? Aye. Lundsman? Aye. Ronane? Aye. Remley? Aye. Mayor Shoneman? Aye. Motion does carry. Next, we've got the city manager's report. Joe, take it away. I just wanted to update you uh, on a few projects. We heard a little bit about the, the airport. You know, the airport is a, a good economic development driver as well as quality of life. Uh, and then at the Parks Board meeting last week, uh, the, they went out to Storybook Land. There's been some small improvements there. Uh, and also a, an update on the softball complex. Uh, it's nearing completion. Uh, I've been making that part of my Sunday drive, and it's it's changing drastically every week. So 
Uh, a week ago, some of the fields had the surface down, and now they're all pretty well down, and some of the fence posts are going in. So uh, both of those uh, being our park system, we have a great park system uh, with quality of life, the airport, uh, such a nice facility there. So those, those are good things to hear about those projects going on. Um, and then really just a, a comment, uh, I have a lot of discussions about uh, economic development, quality of life, and it seems like lately I've been getting a lot of calls on that. And we talk about things have changed during COVID, but there's still a lot of talk about uh, folks uh, living in, relocating to South Dakota, Aberdeen businesses. And uh, with everything going on in our world, it seems like uh, our local economy, uh, there's a lot of interest in it and things are going great. Um, I had a friend in town the other day and was giving him a tour, and it was amazing the things I had to say. This wasn't here, or this was just starting when I got here, and I've been here almost four months, so it's been fast. Um, so our, our town is definitely thriving, and sometimes in, in the hustle of everyday life, we forget that. But it's it's been some, some interesting reminders for me this past week, and I just wanted to share that. That's all. Thanks. I just have one question for Robin. Uh, 15th Avenue, it looks like they're getting ready to pave. <clears throat> Should be paving Thursday and Friday. Okay. So that could be opened up by the weekend? Sure hope so. So, good. Can I just make one more Councilman thing? Lang yeah, Councilwoman Langer. Uh, today, the state opened grants for small businesses in South Dakota. There's $400 million available. So I strongly encourage any small business owners that are listening to check out those grant programs they are they are if you lost money from may or i'm sorry march until august but they're very simple and they have to spend that 400 million dollars by december of this year so it's a great opportunity Thank for you. a small business uh, Ms. and now the requirement is a loss of 25 percent of revenue over the same period in the previous year Yes, from 2019. And it's very simple. And the executive director of the retailer says, when in doubt, fill it out. When in doubt, fill it out. So <laughs> even if you're not quite at 25%, maybe you'll still mm -hmm. lose some more money, I guess. <laughs> and the information's at, at covid.sd.gov. Is that correct? Yes. And, it's the, and it takes you to a link. If anybody has questions, they can email my city council email. I'd be happy to send them direct links. But yes. They can go to the COVID website and very simple one-page info on what they need. It's any anybody can do it too. You don't need an accountant's information. It's very simple. Thank you very much, Tiffany. Mm -hmm. With that, I will take a motion to adjourn this meeting. Second. A motion from Councilman Johnson and a second from Lundsman. Carl, last roll call vote of the evening for us here, please. Council Member Remley. Aye. Ronane? Aye. Lundsman? Aye. Reif? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Reinbold? Aye. Langer? Aye. Rux? Aye. Mayor Shoneman? Aye. Motion is carried. We are adjourned. Thank you all very much.